recognize the member for Burnaby North. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you to the mover of this motion. Uh, to anyone observing these proceedings for the first time, this motion seems pretty innocuous. On the surface, it seems like an expression of solidarity on the part of the opposition. Be it resolved that this House recognize the importance of a clear, fair, and transparent process for changing our electoral system. Who could disagree with that? Who could disagree with that? Fair, open, transparent is a hallmark of healthy democracy. Of course the process is going to be open, fair, and transparent. What's to debate here? Well, I've been an MLA for about a year now. A year of the opposition resisting progress and refusing to work with us to build a better BC. Why all of a sudden would they decide to use private members' time to be cooperative, to seek opportunities, to build consensus? Are we witnessing a breakthrough over there? Is this motion offered in the spirit of democratic reform? Are they trying out the kind of cooperative governance that they've been observing on this side of the House, on this side of the aisle. Wouldn't that make this a significant moment? But no, I've been listening to this debate for almost an hour, and what I hear from them is same old, same old. First, they started out by planting seeds of fear. They don't even know what the question is yet, but they're already calling it rigged and gamed. And then they proceeded to lecture us about what clear, fair, and transparent means. So, in light of what we've been hearing from the members opposite, and with respect to the mover of the motion, one has to conclude that the arguments in defense of their motion are nothing short of Orwellian doublespeak. And the BC Liberals are old hands at doublespeak. Remember Christy Clark in her pink hard hat talking about debt-free BC, while in reality the BC Liberals were racking up an additional $21.5 billion in debt, the biggest increase in BC history? Or what about GP for me? That was the slogan they used for five years to trick voters into thinking that fam the family members, shortage would members. be solved by 2015. But by 2015, the shortage had only gotten work. worse. Did their health, and then their health minister admitted that GP for me was an empty promise that they had no intentions of fulfilling. And let's not forget the fake comeback kid paid ads dressed up to look like um, newspaper covers to fool people into thinking that Christy Clark had won the debate. Talk about fake news. Christy Clark may be gone, but her party's propensity to say one thing and mean something else lives on. They speak in code. There is a long history of parties like the BC Liberals using propaganda to trick working families into believing that what's good for the elite is good for them. There's even a word for it. It's called cultural hegemony. And we're reminded, to, I'm reminded today, that this motion is classic in the, in the theory of Edward Bernays, the pioneer in public relations and propaganda, the self-proclaimed father of spin. Members, and I know they don't want to hear this. Through the chair. He was famous in 1929 for an ad campaign designed to get women to smoke by branding cigarettes torches of freedom. Is this debate a dress rehearsal for the forces of no? for the forces of no who will try to manipulate the public discord, discourse during the referendum campaign. And what I want to do is urge voters to beware of sheep in wolves' clothing. I would urge voters to ask themselves, who really benefits from the status quo? Who really wins when the party who earns less than 50 per cent of the votes captures 100 per cent of the power? I would urge voters to ask themselves, 
Has the current electoral system brought their families and themselves Thank you, the member. economic security that they were Thank promised? Thank you, member. One that does that member. is fair, clear, Thank and you. transparent. Thank you.